for example, um, um, we're doing a small project on air sensor. So we have a bunch of air sensors in different, different places um, and they're collecting data. So um, the data is collected at these different places out in the environment. And, uh, and one way to solve this problem is to collect all that data, push it all into say the public cloud and then analyze um, that data for say, you know, some trends on different levels of uh, different gases or whatever at, at that public cloud. And that, that works very, that makes sense if um, you're not sensitive to um, timeliness, right? Because to transfer all that data itself, some sensors might, you know, be on a, you know, weak, um, you know, network connection is, is very difficult, right? So the more, so if you think about that, it's heavy work to move that data um, across to different places. And, and that's what I mean by data gravity, right? So instead, the easier way to think about it is the data is all being generated out by these sensors. And it's much easier to take my 100 lines of analytics code and push it out to that data and have these little Raspberry Pis run that small compute jobs out there. Um, so, so it's easier to move the compute to the data then move the data to the compute. So that's that's what um, that's what we need to sort of reason about to figure out you know what's the right combination of what to do at which level of of you know this the spectrum from edge to private data centers to public clouds and to the extent possible what we want to do is that's, to avoid moving the a, data. Oh yeah, go the data ahead. has this gravity. Um, so one of the simplest ways to do this is um, filtering. So we see a lot of this going on right now where, you know, 90% of the data or 99% of the data being generated from the sensors, we could just filter out right at the sensor, right? Because, okay, the O2 level is at a nominal rate. So we'll just throw that away. But this one is, is, anomalous so we're going to send that off for further analysis so that type of simple analysis that we could do at the edge to reduce the amount of data being transferred and sort of being able to generate better quality and smarter data as we move along that's that's um that's you know a good principle that we want to do and then the other thing <laughs> just to finish this point good 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 keep going yeah yeah um this is a loop is what I wanted to say. So what we want to do is say, do our heavy lift of say machine learning or deep learning, say uh, we run that training and, and construct new models um, say on a slower loop at, um, at a central place where we could gather data from a lot of different sources. But then once we do that, we compile it into a machine learning model that we could push out um, to the edge processors and they could use that for you know, most of their computation. So, so we have this nice feedback loop where, where the system eventually gets smarter over time. 